you all ever had someone to bet you you wouldn't do something? Yes. 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 Did you go ahead and do it anyway? Yes. yes. Well, I'm going to do something that normally I wouldn't do, but I was double dog dared to do it. So you know what that means. Yes. Howdy! So glad y'all could make it today. <laughs> We're so happy to see you. Now then, Jenny Slippers is so glad you all could come today. Uh, this is something we do every year. And do you know why? We're out to be a text. And that's why we do it. And so you will learn a little bit about Texas today that maybe you didn't know. Um, I'm not originally from Texas, but I've learned a whole lot about Texas since I've married a Texan. So uh, we're just glad you all are here, and we hope that you enjoy the day with us. And uh, now then, there's one thing I'm going to ask you to do, okay? When we get ready to, to do our toast, that's where you drink your water. Now, I got back up. When you get ready to pledge the flag, make sure your cup is in your left hand. Do you know why? Where's your heart? We got to hold our cup in our left hand so we put our right hand to do the pledge. Okay? Can you all remember that? Yes. Sure you can. Okay, have a good day and a lot of fun. Okay? Yes. Good afternoon, boys and girls. I've been asked. I've been asked to pray for you. So would you bow your heads and pray for you? Gracious God, we thank you so much for the great state of Texas. We thank you that we can be Texans. I thank you for these students who are gathered here to learn more about Texas and our history and, and our future, for they are our future. And so I pray that you would raise up among them leaders for our great state and for our nation, Lord, and for our world. I thank you for the Jenny Slippers, for the teachers, and for all of those who are making this special time for us possible. We pray that you be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Color Guard, attention. Audience, please rise. Color Guard, forward march. Question for you. 
Ready? Yes. What does the word toast mean? It means when you can't think of the words. Okay. All right. Um, it means that you toast to something important. Okay. What's the first meaning of the word toast? That's actually the second meaning it got. Do you know that? It's a meaning, but it's a second. What's the first one? Hmm? Cheers. Huh? Cheers. Yeah, cheers. You're still in that second one. I want the first meaning for the word toast. Yes, sir. To bless? It, yeah, it can be. But now, the folks, let's look at me. It's obvious that food's kind of important to me. I'm thinking about the food meaning for the word toast. Oh. Oh, you are too. Tell me about it. What is it? Yeah, what? It's made out of what? It's made out of bread. Okay, now if you want toast to be really good. Jelly. Oh, what do you do with it? Put jelly on it. That's right. What else you do? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Butter? Maybe a little sugar? Okay, now let me tell you about this. We had to get to the first meaning of the word toast so that you understood the very correct meaning you were giving me about today. All right, toast originally was a bread. It was baked and they put cinnamon on it, sugar, all different kind of spices, and they baked it really hard. Okay? Now then, I want to go back. Who told me to bless? All right. Okay. That's, that, that's where the second word toast came in. Now I'm going to do a little bit of reading for you. Basically it says, a toast is an expression of honor or goodwill. A toast is a salute with a drink. Now then, it does come from the meaning that you know, that piece of bread baked with spices in it, because the drink was supposed to bring honor. Now in your cup today, you have water. And that's what you're going to drink. But I want you to imagine, would you rather have water? Or would you rather have water that's flavored? Water. 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 All right, now back ages ago, that's the way they made it special. They took that toast, that piece of bread that had all that sugar and spices in it, and they dropped it in the water or whatever drink, and it gave additional flavor. It made it special. It tasted good. And once again, when you're giving honor, you're paying tribute to somebody, you want it to be special. Now, is that cool or what? Yes. So now that you know the two meanings of the word toast. Now, you can toast a person, a thing, or an event. <laughs> Today, we're toasting Texas. Now, then, how many of you have ever been to a wedding? I could tell by some way, yeah, you've been there. You knew. Oh, I saw it. And the, they announce the bride and the groom, and they enter the room. Okay. Usually at a wedding, the father goes first. He talks the best. You see what I'm at? Yeah. Now, in that, in that situation, they're honoring the bride and groom. You've probably been to a, a, a christening. All kinds of things like that, but that's what a toast is. It's to give honor to pay tribute. Now, Texas is a great state, and it's definitely worthy of our praise. But it definitely a toast has specific, specific steps. Now then, I bet you're surprised, but I never went to charm school. Charm school is where they teach you to be a real lady. I didn't ever get to go there, so I had to look up the steps. Are you ready? All right, step number one is someone has to call for the toast. Now then, usually a toast is given in a very fine glass. Not like this one. All right, in a very fine glass, the glass has lead in it, lead crystal. They pick up their spoon, and usually at a very important event, this is how they call for a toast. Are you ready? But if it's out of glass, made of lead, the tone is beautiful. Now then, they kind of raise their glass. Okay, now I'm gonna go back over here. They wait for everyone to get quiet. And the way that you signal that you know that you're fixing to have a toast is with your water in your hand, you gently 
kind of about halfway raise it back to me. Okay? Kind of got that? Not real high. A little high. Okay, got that? All right. Put it back down now. Now then, after you've raised your class and you've gotten quiet, I, uh, I will say, I'll announce what it's due. I'm going to say, here is a toast to Texas. Now then, you acknowledge again by keeping your glass up. I learned something. Did you know that once someone's called for a toast and you raise your glass, the reason you don't want to go very high is because if you go high, your arm gets tired. And if you ever let it go back down, it's a sign of disrespect. I didn't know that. So once, that's why I said don't go real high, just kind of right there. So you can wait no matter how long the toast is. Now then, in the olden days, everybody used to clink their glasses together. You know, everybody would sit there and they clink, clink. We don't clink anymore. Now it's interesting why we don't. There used to be some bad people in the world back in the days of kings and queens and fabulous parties. And if you were fixing to be the king, but I wanted to be the queen, I would make a toast to you and I'd slip a little bit of poison in my glass. True statement. And then when we clinked, i just make sure I accidentally spilled some in yours. Told. I got to be the queen. <laughs> no, that wasn't a very good thing, was it? So actually that's the reason. Now I really thought they quit clinking their glasses because they didn't want to make a mess. Kind of sounds like me, doesn't it? All right, so that's the reason we just simply hope. Okay. Also, it takes a lot of time, but that that we just hope you're doing a good job. Now then, at the end of the toast, after I'm finished, I raise my glass a little higher. When I raise my glass a little higher, you're going to too. And then we're going to finish the toast together. Got the steps? Yes. All right, put it down. All right. Now then, at the end, after we kind of take uh, drank our toast to Texas, you're simply on if you're on the ends by the window and by the wall, you're going to take your cup, you're going to pass it down. Everybody's going to stack their cup, and then when I walk down this aisle, I'll be able to pick up every single cup in this place without making a mess. Can we do that? Yes. All right. Words of honor. That's what it's about. So as we say our toast to Texas, I want you to listen to the words of honor bestowed on our great state. Okay? A toast to Texas. Texas, joyous and sparkling, evergreen when it rains, enduring in drought, timeless, endless in boundaries, exciting, Home to the adventurous of yesterday and today, with shrines from the past and space and spirit for the future. To Texas. Texas. Everlasting. Everlasting. In the hearts. In the hearts. Of your people. Of your people. Pass it down to the center. Excellent job. First of all, let me tell you, your behavior is outstanding. You are showing such great respect. You're listening. So that is incredible. Before we continue, I want everyone to join me and giving an applause to these wonderful ladies in the Jenny Slippers organization who put this together. They work really hard to do something special for you every year. So let's say thank you. back to them. So on the count of three, let me hear you say yee-haw. One, two, three. Yee-haw. All right. That was absolutely superb. Well, you saw two flags, right? You have the United States flag. You have the state flag. But did you know that Texas had four other flags at one time? Yes. For a total of six flags over Texas. Oh, that's 
saw some eyes go, I've heard Six Flags over Texas before. <laughs> How many of you heard Six Flags over Texas before? That's right. All right, put your hands down. Excellent. Well, let me tell you, for thousands of years, there were Native Americans that lived in Texas, right? But Texas didn't become a part of a country until some explorers from Spain came over. They kind of took over the land, and they came into this area in 1519. What year are we in? 2014. When did they come? 1519. Is that a long time ago? Yes. I would say so. I would say so. So, you know, they kind of hung around in the land, kind of ignored it, but they thought, that's cool. We're here. This is where we're going to stay. And then another group of people came. Those people are the people from France. Okay. So then they came over and they set up kind of like a little camping ground, set up their little place to stay, and they thought they were going to be a part of this country. Now, remember when I said the Spaniards kind of ignored where they were living? Yeah. And they had kind of thought, well, there's not really much here. But when they saw the French come over, they said, well, we don't want them to have it. So what do you think happened? Yeah. They were fighting over it, weren't they? They were. They didn't want them to have it. And then here comes somebody else. Okay? When Mexico had a war of independence, they pushed Spain out and they pushed everybody out. And then Mexico took over. But did that last very long? No. no. It did not. It became its own country. Texas was its own country. It was called the Republic of Texas. What was it called? The Republic of Texas. It was its own. And that happened in 1836. What year did that happen? 1836. And then it joined the United States. <coughs> and that happened in 1845. When did that happen? 1845. It became part of the what? The United States. Right, of America. That's exactly right. And that went along for a little while, and guess what? There was another change. Isn't that right? Can we get along here? There was another change. Sixteen years later, the Republic of Texas, along with ten other states, said, we're going to go be our own. And they were called the Confederacy. What were they called? The Confederacy. And then there was another war. Oh. The Civil War. What war was that? The Civil War. And then it forced it back to the Union, back all together, and that's where we are today. Part of the what? The United States of America. That's right. So that's where all those six flags came from. Spain was the first one. What was the first one? Spain. And France? France. Mexico? Mexico. The Republic of Texas? The Republic of Texas. The Confederacy? Confederacy. And the United States. And the United States. Six flags of America. That's right. And six flags over Texas. What do you know? Who knows about six flags? What is that? It's an amusement park. It's an amusement park. But that's where the name got was inspired was from the history of Texas, the Six Flags Over Texas. And that first park, it was made in 1961. Oh. I bet y'all thought Six Flags Over Texas was something new, didn't y'all? Yeah. Oh, it's been around a long time. 1961. I was one year old. Oh. I know, it's shocking. <laughs> so that's a little bit of history. So now, Mrs. Gallman, if I could have your assistance, please. We're going to do some Texas trivia. I'm going to ask some questions. Now, you need to raise your hand. And I may need some help to see who the first. Not yet, I haven't asked the <laughs> And if you raise your hand before I ask the question, you're going to miss out. So you have to listen to the entire question. We need some help to see who that first person was that answered the question. Okay, are you ready? Yes. You gotta listen. <laughs> what is Texas's nickname? Ooh. Damien. United States? No, it's nickname. 
Oh, Osnan? The Lone Star State. The Lone Star State! Everybody, what's the nickname for Texas? The Lone Star State! Excellent. All right. Texas is proud because they have the nation's largest herd of what? Cattle. Not cattle. Trey. Longhorns. Not longhorns. No. Herd of what? Cattle. Corn. Nope. Buffalo? Nope. No. Nope. Rayleigh? Land. Nope. Meals. Nope. Nope. Oh, no, no, no. Elijah? Cows? No, not cattle. Horses? No, everybody put your hands down. White tail deer. Oh. All right, everybody. They boast that they have the nation's largest herd of what? White tail deer. All right, here we go. Here's the next one. What is the capital of Texas? Yes? What river is Austin Austin located on? Maggie. Rio. Nope. 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 Okay, 
so don't let me forget. All right. How many presidents were born in Texas? How many were born? Five. No. No. Three. No. Two. Two. Only two presidents. They were Dwight Eisenhower and Lyndon Bain Johnson. All right, great job on the trivia. Okay, I want you to look in your little booklet on the back where it says Texas are Texas. It is the state song, so we're going to sing it. Oh, you can do it. I bet you can. We're only going to do the first verse in the chorus. Okay? Everybody ready? Yeah. Texas are Texas. All Stars at 